Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be teaching you everything that I know about the procedure related to draft surveys on ships. So today I will uh, explain in steps how do you carry out a draft survey purely from a theoretical point of view and uh, then uh, in my next video I will also show you a calculation that involves a draft survey and what are the values you can obtain from it. Alright, so if you don't know what is a draft survey, a draft survey is uh, used to read the drafts of the vessel in order to obtain the displacement of the ship all right so a vessel is floating in a certain water and you have the aft draft marks and you have the forward draft marks all right so the drafts are read on the port as well as starboard side forward aft as well as midships and after you make corrections for hogging and sagging trim list and density of the water the displacement of the vessel can be obtained so you normally carry out two draft surveys one draft survey is carried out on arrival and the other one is on completion of cargo operations right the difference in displacements after you make allowances for change in bunkers, ballast and fresh water and known weights gives you the weight of cargo loaded or discharged. So when a ship arrives, a loading port, a draft survey is carried out and from the displacement obtained, the weights on board such as fresh water, ballast, bunkers, light ship of the vessel, they are subtracted. The remaining figure gives you the ship's constant. This constant is typical for a particular vessel and includes the weight of unused stores, sludge in tanks, rust and other things which are not accountable. On completion of loading, another draft survey is conducted and the displacement is obtained and after subtracting the known weights for the departure condition and the constant as obtained from the initial draft survey, the balance figure gives us the cargo loaded at the port. The procedure is same but the figures are obtained in reverse during discharge of cargo. So now let me discuss the procedure for draft survey. What are the steps involved in draft survey? So what is the step one and then we'll go from there. All right. So I'll show it to you in drawing as well so that you can follow me with the drawing. So the first step, the first step is correction of drafts. Now what does this correction of drafts mean? Correction of drafts means that the drafts are read on both sides of the vessel, forward, aft and midship. These drafts must be the drafts at the forward and aft perpendicular. Alright, so here is the aft perpendicular, here is the forward perpendicular, right, of the vessel and also you read it midships. Or this is the symbol for midships if the draft marks are not placed at the forward and aft perpendiculars they are to be corrected so as to obtain the drafts at the perpendiculars all right so that is the procedure for the correction of drafts now if you look at this then you have here the aft perpendicular you have the forward perpendicular and then you may have the draft marks so i'll use a different color pen so that you guys don't get confused with all these lines that i'm drawing so you will see that uh, you will probably have so how can i show you the water level so let's say this is the water level right and now uh, what color should i use here you go so this is the here you go this is the uh, draft aft all right this is the draft aft let's call it da and this is right and uh, you have the draft somewhere here in the midships 
right we call it dm draft midships right and then somewhere here you will have the draft forward so draft as you know is right from the keel to the water level so i don't have to tell you what drafts are right you guys must be advanced minor so we have draft forward so we have draft aft draft midships and draft forward right so then you have a which is the distance between this is let's call it a is the distance between the forward draft marks and the forward perpendicular and then you have b which is the distance between the aft draft marks and the aft perpendicular then you have c which is the distance between the midship and the midship draft marks df as you know and da and dm are the position of the draft marks forward aft and midships f as you know is the forward perpendicular a is the aft perpendicular and we can have the midship written as m if you want okay otherwise this is the symbol for midships as well so now how do you apply the correction of drafts so forward correction forward correction all right what is the sim what is the formula for that that is trim multiplied by the distance a as you see in the figure divided by length of the vessel so what is length of the vessel this is the length between the perpendicular this is l l length between the perpendicular minus a minus b this is the forward correction all right forward correction for the forward draft then for the correction for to the aft draft we have the aft correction which is equal to trim times the distance b divided by l minus a minus b so the denominator remains the same in both the cases and then of course you have the midship correction so the midship correction i'll write it down for you is again trim multiplied by the distance c divided by l minus a minus b so you know all all know what trim is trim is the difference between the forward and the aft draft all right so if the forward draft is 9 meters aft draft is 11 meters trim is 2 meters by stern now the trim used here is the trim as read from the draft marks which is not the actual trim of the vessel the trim of the vessel as you see in the figure is the trim by the stern now the sign of the corrections will be opposite if the shim is trimmed by the head the sign of the midship correction will be opposite if the draft marks are forward of midships and if the position of the forward draft marks are forward of the forward perpendicular and the position of the aft draft marks are aft of the aft perpendicular the denominator will become l plus a plus b it may also be l plus a minus b or l minus a plus b if either aft or forward draft marks are on the opposite side of the forward or aft perpendiculars however this is not normally found all right so i will repeat myself that the trim that is used here in this formulas is the trim as you read from the draft marks which is not the actual trim of the vessel the trim of the vessel as shown in the figure that you see here is trimmed by stern because the aft draft mark is much more than the forward draft mark you can see that by the length of the arrow so the sign of the corrections will be opposite if the ship was trimmed by head the sign of the midship correction will be opposite if the draft marks are forward of the midship instead of aft of the midship now again if the position of the forward draft marks are forward of the forward perpendicular and the position of the aft draft marks are aft of the aft perpendicular the denominator which you see here as l minus a minus b can also become l plus a plus b or l plus a minus b or l minus a plus b if either aft or forward draft marks are on the opposite side of the forward or aft perpendiculars which is normally not the case normally the case is that the draft marks will always be located 
um, the forward draft mark will always be located aft of the forward perpendicular and the aft mark of aft draft marks will always be forward of the aft perpendicular just the way i have drawn it all right so but i just thought i'll let you guys know in case your shape is slightly different what is the second step in draft survey is correction for hog and sag so you have to find out if your vessel is hogging or sagging and make corrections for that as well all right so when the vessel is hogged or sagged the displacement as obtained from the main drafts will of course not be correct so let me show you here okay this is when you can see the weights on the end of the vessel is much more so this is a very terrible drawing <laughs> i'll draw it again so uh, my drawing skills are terrible guys if you have already not figured it out so i'll just draw the ship first here and then i'll draw the bow and then you will see slightly here all right and uh, you will have the watermark in blue somewhere here and the other condition and the other condition could be where you know there is more weight in the midship right there's more weight in the midship here and we have the water level here so what happens here in this case here so when hogged it will be increased by the extent of the hog and when sagged it will be less by the amount of sag to correct for this we do not use the mean drafts but rather the mean of means or quarter mean drafts so let me show you how so here you can see uh, here decrease in displacement will take place you know because uh, it is hogged or it is sagged in the other case uh, increase in displacement will take place because the drafts will not be the accurate draft so we have to apply the correction here because it is hogged and sagged so that is not giving you an indication of the accurate drafts here so what do you do here you will find out the mean of means so how do you find out mean of means mean of means will be found out by forward draft plus half draft divided by 2 all right but you also will add the midship draft here and then divide the whole thing by 2 again plus midship draft but in the denominator you will have another 2 here so this is mean of means so if you add them all together you what you will get is f plus a plus 6 times midship draft divided by 8 all right so just to keep it constant let me just have the letter m here not uh, mid so m all right so this is the formula you will use to find the mean of means so the displacement of the vessel can be found out now using the mean of means drafts so this is step number two because we here we are correcting for hogging and sagging then what is the third step the third step is known as the first trim correction right now what is the first trim correction now the displacement of the vessel should correspond to the draft at the center of flotation or hydrostatic draft so center of flotation is the point about which the ship trims now when the vessel is on even keel and the trim is zero with no hog or sag the hydrostatic draft the mean of means draft and all other drafts will be same and so the first trim correction will be zero so let me repeat here even keel vessel that means zero trim all right zero trim no hog or sag then hydrostatic draft mean of means draft all other drafts are same all right let me summarize it for you so correction will be first trim correction will be zero however if the vessel is trimmed the position of the center of flotation changes if vessel is trimmed because that is the point about which the ship is trimmed so if vessel is trimmed position of the center of flotation changes and a correction has to be applied to the displacement obtained from the mean of means draft to obtain the displacement at the first hydrostatic draft now how do we obtain or how do we apply that correction so we say first trim correction is equal to 
length between perpendiculars LBP by 2 minus LCF multiplied by trim of the vessel all right so we call it T or trim of the vessel multiplied by 100 multiplied by TPC divided by again LBP so here trim is negative if vessel is down by head all right and trim is positive if vessel is by stern down by stern or trimmed by stern all right if the stern draft is more then of course trim correction here will be positive all right so this is the first trim correction then we have the second trim correction so the next step is the second trim correction so step number four is second trim correction all right so let me show you what is second trim correction now what is lcf i've told you now if you look at a vessel here lcf could be located somewhere here you know this is the center of flotation the point about which the ship trims now you can find lcf values from hydrostatic tables now this lcf that we use has been obtained from the mean of means draft which is not strictly correct as it has to be the LCF for the hydrostatic draft because you go into the hydrostatic particulars and then obtain the LCF for the hydrostatic draft. Now as the trim changes the position of the LCF will also change due to the shape the change in the shape of the water line. So as the change in the shape of the water line takes place the LCF changes. The second trim correction will provide you for this change in displacement due to the change in the position of the LCF or the longitudinal center of flotation. The LCF moves in such a way that it describes an arc of a circle with the water line tangential to the arc at the center of flotation. This results in a layer being added and so the second trim correction is always positive. Now LCF is the distance of the longitude of the center of flotation from the arc perpendicular. All right, this is LCF. But this is the center of flotation is the letter F. All right. Now this correction is always positive. Now how do we apply this correction? Second trim correction is equal to 50 times square of the trim. Square of trim. Whatever is the trim, square of that. And then MCTC minus 1 or rather the first MCTC. So you have to get the difference of the MCTCs in different conditions. MCTC 2 divided by the length between perpendicular and this correction is always always positive all right so the change in the displacement of the vessel due to the change in the position of the lcf will give you two displacements for those two displacements you have to get two mctcs so this is for displacement one all right and then as the displacement changes this is for displacement too because as the displacement will change your underwater volume will change the shape of the water plane will change so your mctc will change moment to change the trim by one centimeter is mctc now mctc1 and mctc2 are the mctcs 50 centimeters above and below the quarter mean draft all right so let me write that down as well this these two mctcs what are these two mctcs they are 50 centimeters above and below the quarter mean draft so whatever is the draft you know what quarter means that means one fourth the mean draft all right that is quarter if you don't know what quarter means so this MCTC1 and MCTC2 are 50 centimeters above and below the quarter mean draft. All right, so that is what I mean by MCTC1 and MCTC2. All right. So I will not call it displacement 1 and displacement 2. I will call it MCTC1 uh, and MCTC2 are 50 centimeters above 
and below the quarter mean draft so that you guys don't get confused right so you know what second trim correction is now so second trim correction uh, is correcting for the change in the shape of the water line so this second trim correction provides for this change in displacement due to the change in the position of the lcf all right so the lcf moves in such a way that it describes an arc of a circle with the water line which is tangential to the arc at the center of flotation all right now let's go to step number five what is step number five step number five is heel correction heel correction all right now what is heel correction let me show it to you by a diagram here all right let me this is the let's say a transverse movement all right so this is the water line shown by the letter or rather the color blue and then i will show you something that refers to a heel so this is the water line wl and this is the water line on the vessel being healed so when the vessel heals the mean drafts will reduce as the immersed wedge which is this wedge here so this is the immersed wedge and this is the emerged wedge all right now when the vessel heals the mean drafts will reduce as the immersed wedge which is the wedge inside the water will normally be greater than the emerged wedge which is outside the water so this wedge is outside water all right and this wedge is inside the water now when the vessel is healing let's say this in this case here the vessel is healing on the port side if this is port side and this is starboard side this is healing on the port side all right so you have a immersed wedge which is inside the water which is greater than the emerged wedge which is leading to the ship rising bodily this however results in a lower displacement and so the heel correction is always positive so what is heel correction heel correction heel correction is equal to 6 times tpc1 minus tpc2 multiplied by d1 minus d2 now what are d1 and d2 d1 and d2 they are the port and starboard midship drafts all right and what is tpc1 and tpc2 these are the two tpcs tpc stands for tons per centimeter immersion they are the two tpcs corresponding to the midship drafts that is d1 and d2 all right so if you go into the hydrostatic particulars if for d1 that is draft first draft you will find out the tpc1 and for d2 you will find out tpc2 this is from hydrostatic tables all right for hydrostatic tables tpc values are given against drafts so you can find out you can go into you can read the port and starboard midship drafts and then go into the hydrostatic tables and find out the corresponding tpcs for the two drafts and then find put all the values here and get the value of the heel correction that you apply as well all right and then we have the last step which is called the density correction all right density correction now of course because you will be floating your ship will be in water of different densities and the hydrostatic particulars hydrostatic hydrostatic particulars is provided normally provided for the density of 1.025 tons per metric cube this is the seawater density seawater density right but you will not always not always be in seawater you can be in dock water you can be in fresh water you can be in any water other than salt water so here the values will be taken from the hydrostatic particulars but they will be applicable only for seawater so what you have to do then is then you have to use this ratio new density divided by old density which is equal to new displacement 
divided by old displacement all right so you have to do some cross multiplication and you will be able to find out your displacement value for the new density all right so the displacement taken from the hydrostatic particulars then has to be corrected in this following ratio all right finally before i end the video i have to tell you some of the limitations of the draft survey so what are some of the limitations of the draft survey so the draft has to be read from sea level which is practically impossible to do if you have been a seafarer you always read the drafts from the jetty or the wharf which creates a parallax error by seeing through the transparent seawater right so a parallax error is always there because you are not reading the draft at the sea level which of course is not possible second is if you read the drafts in rough weather then also errors can be introduced you will not be able to read the drafts accurately and hence the displacement obtained will always be in error so draft survey reports must always contain the sea conditions prevailing at the time so that the user is able to judge the accuracy of the survey all right just like when you take compass error you write down the weather similarly if when you are reading the drafts you must write down in what conditions you read the draft number 3 it is difficult to obtain one figure for the density of water all right so density estimation becomes a big factor here and density is normally estimated by using the hydrometer right now at the bottom of the ship density is maximum while at the top of the ship it is minimum so the density has to be taken at least at three depths and at different location along the ship's length and port and starboard side i don't know if it's possible or not you can take it on one side for sure at different lengths but i don't know whether you can go and take it on the other side or not but this is how it is done in the draft survey normally not done in normal operations but in draft survey that is how it is done you have to go all around the vessel and check the densities check the draft right number 4 the ship must always be floating freely and not resting on the bottom all right so sometimes in some uh, ports the vessel sits on the bottom especially if it's a sandy bottom it may be intentional it may be uh, not intentional but for the draft survey the vessel should be floating freely number 5 the mooring lines should not be pulling her or exerting any downward pressure so mooring lines should not be exerting pressure or any uh, or pulling her all right number 6 if the sea bottom is soft mud and the water has suspended particles then the density will not be that of salt water all right so be wary of muddy bottoms all right especially if there is muddy water around make sure that you check the density correctly number 7 if there is a strong tide wave the ship will be subject to squat and there will be build up water or build up of water in the direction from which the current is coming which is leading to added buoyancy at that part so the drafts must be read at slack water only all right to avoid the effect of squat right squat is when the vessel bodily sits especially if the flow of the water is very fast beneath the keel of the vessel number 8 the hydrometer which is used for calibrating or rather estimating the density is calibrated for a particular temperature if the temperature is other than this the density will not be correct due to expansion and contraction of the hydrometer itself all right so we have limitations of the hydrometer as well which is calibrated for a particular temperature now hydrometer is a device used to calculate the density of the vessel or estimate the density of the water in which the vessel is floating finally number 9 at high temperatures the deck will expand and if the lower part of the ship is cool the errors will occur due to the shape of the ship this is something that uh, you can't do much anything about you can't uh, so you have to see or uh, be aware of the temperature uh, or surrounding temperatures which may be affecting the expansion and contraction of the hull which is changing the shape of the hull um, and that will affect of course the underwater plane or rather the plane water plane area and the draft reading as well all right so these are some of the limitations so these are the steps to the uh, draft survey 
and uh, I was going to show you the calculation as well but I didn't want to make it in one video otherwise the video becomes very long so if you understand these steps you can pretty much solve all questions or you can carry out a draft survey of your own in my next video I will show you how to carry out the calculation involved in the draft survey as well I'll take up an example I'm looking for an example if you find one I'll uh, show you how to actually perform the calculations for the draft survey as well all right so i hope you liked this video and you found it to be useful you can use this video to make notes for your exam purpose as well and that is the whole idea behind me making these videos thanks for watching guys and thanks for supporting the channel i look forward to your feedback comments and queries